Today's video is brought to you by Luster. Well, today's video is easily one of the most anticipated mice of the year. See, it's not easy to be first. You gotta give Logitech a lot of credit because they were the first ones to really break down that pro wireless performance barrier. Something a lot of people thought was not possible. It took their closest competitor, Razer, a while to catch them in terms of performance and power usage. There's a lot to be said for that. But once you break that seal, it opens you up to competition. I still wouldn't say there's a ton of competition in the high-end wireless space, but the competitors that are there definitely bring some pressure. So the G Pro Wireless is back in a new lightweight form that they're calling the Pro X Wireless Superlight. It's a pretty straightforward review, but I have a feeling that some of the changes they made and some of the changes they didn't are gonna be controversial. We're gonna talk about why. You ready? Let's go! Yo, I'm Brian P, you're watching Bad C Tech, and today we're checking out the Pro X Wireless Super Light Gaming Mouse from Logitech. Full transparency, Logitech did send this out for review, but as you should know by now, doesn't affect my review in any way. First, the good and bad news. The Super Light will not be replacing the existing G Pro Wireless. That mouse will remain in market and priced at $129.99. This mouse will take their flagship spot and will be priced at $149.99. If this mouse looks familiar, it's because very little was done in terms of the shape itself. The big headline here is that the Super Light is billed at a weight of under 63 grams. They're being generous here because my copy weighs more like 57, 58 grams versus the G Pro Wireless at 82 grams on my scale. Now you don't get to cut over 20 grams of weight without making some compromises and we see that both in features and accessibility. The biggest physical change is that we no longer have any support here for left-handed users. Those buttons are simply deleted. That means that all the included removable replaceable side buttons from the GPW are also deleted. In their place is a small weird ridge that looks like the shell of the mouse was simply laid over the buttons. That's not accurate of course but it looks like that. In theory it could provide a little help on liftoff, but the way I hold this mouse sees that little ridge in between both my ring finger and my pinky, so it offers nothing in my case. Structurally, they seem to have made no compromises. There's no holes, obviously, and the entire mouse feels every bit as solid and well-built as the GPW. It's very balanced, and the cut to the weight is definitely noticeable in hand. Side note here, eco concern was really top of mind when they designed this product. They've managed to do something here that's completely carbon neutral, which is a huge feat. I had no idea eco concerns were so important to Logitech. If you've never looked into Bracken Darrell before, Logitech CEO, you really should. Really impressive guy, very humble, great values. I'll link a video I found on him down in the description. As a refresher, length here is 126 millimeters long, 60 at the front flare, 63 at the rear, and 59 at the grip with a height of about 40 millimeters. It's one of the most safe shapes out there. It generally works with a pretty wide variety of hand sizes. I can't actually palm and claw this, but fingertip is tough for me, both in grip width and the overall height, even with hands measuring 20.5 by 10.5 5 centimeters. Both white and black colorways will be available at launch. The coating remains unchanged and it's really a magnet for oil and fingerprints. I would definitely cop this in a white version for sure. The next deletion is any form of RGB of any sort. This not only cuts the weight, but it improves the battery life. So the logo is matte silver now and we lose the DPI indicators. You're not gonna need those indicators anyway because the actual DPI button has been deleted from the bottom of the mouse as well. The only way to set the DPI is in the G-Hub software or to assign one of the other buttons to DPI switch which on what's now a five button mouse really limits your real estate. You can of course use G-Shift if you're willing to part ways with one button to gain access to four additional functions. As a gaming mouse, this probably isn't that big of a deal. Unless you have multiple panels in your setup that operate at different resolutions and you like a different DPI for each, just something to be aware of. Inside the box, you get a small wireless dongle that's branded Pro X and the extender, as well as a charging cable. It's usable as a play and charge cable as well. Same Trident design, same rubberized coating, same micro USB. USB connector. It's flexible enough, but it all feels pretty throwback at this point. Underneath the glides have seen a big update with zero additive PTFE, hence the grayish color with a huge glide on the front. You still have the sensor glide. The rear glide is no longer three sections, but one continuous like three quarter circle. And if that's not enough glide, they also include a replacement puck that has its own full glide as well. So you can turn like 70% of the bottom of this mouse into one giant mouse gate basically. Weighs roughly the same as the stock puck as well. So no worries there. Under that puck, you still retain storage for the dongle and you do still retain compatibility for the power play puck as well, which will add between three and five grams of weight. Should go without saying here, but if you've got a huge stash of aftermarket skates saved up for the GPW, they're not gonna be compatible here. Also included are both these thin rubberized mouse grips as well for 
the sides and the triggers both. As far as these triggers go, they feel exactly like the GPW to me. So little to no pre-travel and obvious post-travel. They do suffer pretty pronounced side play as well. Nothing game breaking, but if we're holding everyone to the same standard, they're better than the Viper Ultimate and not nearly as good as the MOW in this regard. An important note here is that these have the updated switches in them that we saw on the Shroud version of the G Pro Wireless. So that dreaded double clicking that you've likely heard about should be mitigated to a much better degree here. Logitech doesn't specifically say these are 20 mil versus the former 50 mil Omrons, but the actuator is that same gray white color now instead of blue, so you can do the math on that one. The left side buttons as well then have no meaningful difference over the original at all, neither in shape, size, position, nor performance. The scroll wheel now has a white hub, but there's no meaningful change there either in terms of operation. Still the same ratchet force, which is a new term I learned during this review. I love it. It's like the world's worst superhero team. I gotta take a second to thank our sponsor Luster for continuing to support the channel. You've probably seen their links down in the description of my videos, and if you haven't, you definitely should. Most people want to read or watch a product review as part of their shopping experience, and even though I really appreciate that you watch mine, before you part ways with your money, I encourage you to take in as much information from as many different sources as you can. The problem is there's a ton of content out there, and it's easy to fall down the rabbit hole reading and watching different reviews, it's easy to invest a lot of time, and you may come away more confused than you were when you started. And that's where Luster comes in. It's a free shopping tool or extension for Chrome and Firefox that consolidates all that info for you by gathering it from a number of trusted places and reviewers around the internet, Wirecutter, Reddit discussions, even other YouTubers. You can search by your specific product need and your specific budget and get a good overall view of just how well a product stacks up from a lot of different perspectives and reviewers from around the internet, not just me. It can also alert you to sales or personalized product recommendations right on Amazon or Google, making it easy to score the best product at the best price and keep tabs on all those Black Friday, Cyber Monday sales this holiday season, since most of the shopping is going down online this year. Luster is totally free, it's easy to use, and it can help save you a ton of time and money when you're searching for that perfect product at that perfect price. Check them out now at join.luster.ai. So naturally we still have Lightspeed Wireless here, Hero 25K sensor here as well. This is something they have to continue to tweak and improve as more and more devices head to the desktop, taking advantage of that 2.4 gigahertz bandwidth. As expected, I had zero issues with the range or the performance of any kind. I figured these would work fine with Logitech's own Pro X headset, so I tested them with the new HyperX Wireless Cloud 2. They both worked great, no issues. The cut to weight is definitely noticeable in game. This mouse performs every bit as well as you'd expect. I definitely play better with this than the G Pro Wireless. I'm largely a fan of lightweight mice, though I still find myself thinking about and adjusting my grip a lot with this shape. That's something that's always been true for me in the G Pro Wireless because it lacks a place to anchor my pinky finger. So my grip isn't nearly as predictable as it is with like the Viper or the Model O Wireless. Between those other two, Viper is still my favorite shape due to the slightly smaller grip width, but it's super close. On the topic of battery life, the removal of the RGB sees us at a battery life of approximately 70 hours, which mirrors close enough to both the Viper and the Model O Wireless. Keep in mind to hit those numbers on the other two mice, you're gonna need to run those with no RGB there as well. Okay, let's talk value, cause Gloria's pretty much ruined that party for every other company last week. This is right back at the top of the spectrum in terms of price at $149.99. Spin that on a Viper, and you'll get a charging dock and support for lefties, but you'll also get back up to that 74, 75 gram mark and that optical switch feel doesn't go over well with everybody. Spin that on a Model O wireless and you'll damn near get two of them and you're at 69 grams, but you have holes, which some people will never be a fan of and no support for lefties there either. Now, obviously I'm not a pro level player, so I play pretty much the same with all three of these mice. All this stuff, all the little sensor tweaks and firmware stuff, it's largely lost on me. Now, I do consider myself an above average player, but unless you're in the top 5% of players out there, a lot of that stuff will probably be lost on YouTube. What you do get for 150 bucks is the lightest wireless mouse on the market, if I'm not mistaken, though it doesn't come without some concessions. How important that weight is, is up to you. Do I recommend paying 150 or even $130 for a wireless mouse? No, not today. 
Asked me last week and I would have told you different, but things have changed. This is by all accounts a great mouse. The technical marvel to have this performance and this quality at 60 grams or under. And now that they've addressed the double click elephant in the room, some people may even take comfort in just having the support of the Logitech brand name. It's just in a tough spot. It's a really specific mouse. It lacks general use convenience features and it really goes all in on being a pro level gaming mouse, which it does very well. The primary problem for the Superlight outside of the support for left-handed users is that the Model O wireless exists. There's a huge difference between 80 bucks and 150 bucks. And unless there's something specific about the MOW that rubs you the wrong way, it doesn't feel to me like there's enough here to justify it. We'll also have to take into account the overall quality we see when that Model O wireless goes wide and gets into the hands of end users and not just reviewers. Can confirm, I did hear back from SteelSeries. They've got an AROX 3 wireless on the way to me. So I'll have that video out just as fast as I can for you guys so we can get a good overall look at these different comparisons. I'd really like to hear from the guys that are just like diehard fans of the G Pro Wireless. Does this do it for you? Did it do enough to warrant you rebuying at this price point? Let me know in the comments. Availability for these both in white and black should start on the 3rd of December. Follow my socials for all the latest release info as we get a little closer. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button. And until next time, stay up.